What's up everybody, how's it going? In this video, I wanna do three things. First of all, I wanna talk about the various types of programmers that exist out there. Second of all, I wanna invite you to identify in yourself and perhaps even in your coworkers and your teammates the types of programmers that you and that they are. And I'll also tell you the type of programmer that I think I am. And then thirdly, I wanna tell you why I think this is an important exercise why you should do this exercise, why you should try to know what types of programmers your coworkers are. And so we'll talk about all of this in this video. So without further ado, let's jump into it. I suppose I should say one thing before I jump into it, which is that none of these types of programmers are really set in stone rules. If anything, they're kind of like stereotypes, but I do think that they're stereotypes that are based in reality. Like I have identified these different types of programmers, four types specifically, based on my experience, you know, working at Google, at Facebook, I saw a bunch of these at those companies, and even my experience working at my own company now, a smaller company, Algo Expert. By the way, on that note, if you're preparing for your coding interviews or your systems design interviews, then do check out my company, Algo Expert. Go to algoexpert.io and use the promo code CLEM, C-L-E-M, for a discount on the platform. So, okay, let's jump into the very very first type of programmer that exists out there. And this is the type of programmer who, as soon as they are faced with some sort of bug or challenge in their code, they jump immediately to Stack Overflow. Just kidding, that's all of us. But okay, seriously, the first type of programmer is what I like to call a coding machine. And the funny thing about that is that this term, coding machine, is actually used legitimately at Facebook. It's this sort of unofficial title. And as you might imagine, it refers to the type of programmer who pumps out a ton of code, can pump out code you know, way faster than most other programmers. And I would also extend it to, it's really a programmer who cares much more so about pure coding, pure unadulterated coding, rather than anything else. It's the type of programmer who doesn't really care the type of product that they're working on or even the, the team that they're working with. What they care the most about is being able to code, being faced with technically complex problems, challenges. They care about maybe the, the uh, dev environment that they're working in. They have everything optimized. They tend to work in Vim or Emacs. They tend to really not like meetings. I know that most of us don't like meetings, but they especially don't like meetings. They just wanna be coding. That is the first type of programmer. The second type of programmer is what I like to call the product-oriented programmer. And you can think of it sort of as the opposite of the coding machine. This is the type of programmer who cares deeply about the product that they're working on, about the thing that they're building. This is the type of programmer who will be unhappy if they're on the wrong product. As an example, some people don't wanna be working for a social media company or on a social media product. They really feel passionately against working on these types of products. Or similarly, some people really don't wanna work on an enterprise product. They don't wanna work on something that's B2B. They wanna work on something that consumers, including maybe themselves, can actually use. And they really care about that. And again, this is in contrast with the coding machine who might not care whether they're working on, let's say, an internal tool at the company that they're working at, or whether they're working on YouTube, the YouTube front page. The coding machine doesn't really care about that. The product-oriented person does. The product-oriented programmer tends to actually enjoy going to some meetings because they like to be part of the decision-making for the product or for the design. This second type of programmer tends to really take pride in the outcome or the output of their work rather than the work itself, if that makes sense. Now, the third type of programmer is what I like to call the domain expert or domain specialist. And this one is a little bit nuanced. It lives kind of in between the product-oriented software engineer or programmer and the coding machine in the sense that this is someone who will be really passionate about the product that they're working on and who might actually end up being a coding machine, but only if they're working in their domain of specialty. And typically it's something very niche, very specialized. So the canonical example that I like to give for this is the programmer who is 
really specialized in a particular front-end framework. So for example, someone who is really specialized in, let's say, React, to the point where they want to work on the React development team, or either you know, at Facebook, like on the actual React development team, or maybe they want to work you know, at a company that's not Facebook, but that happens to use React, and they specifically want to work and are good at working on maybe like an internal framework or wrapper around React or, you know, some internal front-end API that facilitates the usage of React for the rest of the engineering team. So that's the specialized software engineer or programmer. And then finally, the fourth type of programmer is what I like to call the process-oriented programmer. This is the type of programmer who deeply cares about having a very rigid, rigorous, robust, the three R's, a framework or process on their development team. They care about having everything planned out, having everybody on the team know what everybody else is working on at a given time, having set rules for how code reviews are sent up, how and when they're reviewed, how they're approved. They care about having very consistent style guidelines and very clean and readable code. They care about having very um, rigorous tests in place and again, rules for how tests are done, when they're written, how many tests you have to have for a feature. This is the type of programmer who cares much more about doing things the right way, so to speak. They care much more about how things are done than the outcome of their work or than the work itself. They care about the process of the work. So these are the four types of programmers that I've personally identified. Now, of course, I'm sure that some of you might be thinking right now, well, it kind of feels like either I or other people that you've seen around you fit into two or even three of these types. And yes, like I said, this is not some sort of hard and fast rule. You might fit into a couple of the types or even three. In fact, we could even add a fifth type of programmer, which I'll call the jack of all trades, the person who's legitimately a little bit of everything. Now, if I had to tell you what I identify myself as, uh, I would say that I am probably either somewhere in that jack of all trades mix, uh, minus the domain expert probably, or at my core, I would say that I am a product oriented software engineer. I am a software engineer or programmer who does deeply care about what it is that I'm working on and what it is that I'm gonna build uh, or take part in building. So to give you an example, if I ever were to go back to work at a tech company, not my own company, I'll go expert, unlike uh, during my first job at Google where I didn't really have a choice, I just had the Google offer and you know I really wanted it and I was very happy about it and I kind of sucked it up. Even though I worked on a product, Google Cloud Platform, that I wasn't particularly passionate about, you know, it wasn't the thing that I really wanted to build out in a Google Cloud Platform. But now, if I were to go back to a company, I would definitely be picky and I would definitely want to work on something that truly brings me excitement. Now, this is in stark contrast with one of my really good friends and coworkers whom I worked with uh, at Google, who's on my team at Google Cloud Platform. He was probably a coding machine and he was the type of person who truly did not care what he worked on. He did not care about the product. He did not care about what the feature he was implementing was. All that he cared about was, can I code? Can I not go to meetings? Can I have a really cool tech stack? Can I work with nice internal tools? Am I gonna be uninterrupted and be able to pump out a ton of code? And that's just all he wanted. And it turns out that his being a coding machine and my being more of a product oriented software engineer worked really well in our favors, in both of our favors, because we complemented each other very well. And so this brings me to the final point that I wanted to touch on in this video, which is why should you try to figure out what type of programmer you are and what type of programmer your coworkers are? Because if you don't do that, Let's talk about you for a second. If you don't do that, and if you get assigned work or responsibilities that clash with the type of programmer that you are, then at best, you're gonna be just less productive and less happy. And at worst, you're gonna be just 
very unproductive and very unhappy. And so in the same vein, the reason that you want to know what types of programmers your coworkers are is because of what I said before about my coworker at Google and how we complemented each other very well. You can complement your coworkers and they can compliment you super well if you know the types of programmers that they are. So if you know that your coworker is a coding machine, but you're someone who's much more product oriented, then maybe you can take some of the meeting load off of them, or maybe they can do stuff that kind of, uh, you know, bores you out. Like they can do technical work that you don't really want to do and you're going to compliment each other really well. Or let's say that you're an engineering manager, maybe, maybe you're a manager watching this and you've got your team of software engineers. If you know the types of engineers that they are, you're going to be able to cater to them to assign them work that is going to make them happy and is going to make them thrive and is going to make your team thrive and your product thrive and your company thrive, right? So it's very important to know the type of programmer that you are, the types of programmers that your coworkers are, and that's that. That's all I've got for you. I'm very curious. What do you think about this? First of all, do you think that I missed a major type of programmer? If you do, let me know. Uh, let me know what type of programmer you are. And let me know if you happen to work on the dream team, so to speak, that has a little bit of everything. I know for a fact that when we started at Algo Expert, my co-founder, Antoine, fit really well with me. Again, we had this complimentary thing going on because he was kind of a, a domain expert in everything infrastructure, Kubernetes, Docker, which was really important. We really needed that when we started Algo Expert to build the code execution engine and to just get things up and running. Whereas I really liked the product stuff. And then, you know, we were in our own rights, kind of coding machines, you know, me on the front end and him on the, on the infrastructure. And it just kind of worked out really well for us. But so let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. Don't forget to smash the like button if you enjoyed the video. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on LinkedIn and Twitter if you enjoy short form written content. Instagram if you like pictures. And otherwise, I will see you in the next video.